Hello and welcome to this video on what is a dummy variable trap. My name is Christian Geiser, I'm an instructor with Quantfish. So what is a dummy variable trap? In order to understand this, we first have to talk about what we mean by dummy variables and when you would use dummy variables in statistical analysis. So what are dummy variables? Dummy variables are binary 0, 1, coded variables that we use in regression analysis to represent categorical or nominal predictor or independent variables. This could be a linear regression analysis or it could be a logistic regression analysis or it could be a path analysis even or a structural equation model where we want to have exogenous variables or want to look at exogenous variables that are nominal in terms of their scale level. Now, why do we need dummy variables? Why can we not just use our normal nominal independent variables in a regression? To show you this, I have created in this data file here a nominal variable country as well as three dummy variables that represent the categories of country that I'm looking at here, as well as a dependent variable that we will look at later when we check out the dummy variable trap in a regression analysis. So notice that the country variable here has three nominal categories, China, UK and Japan, and those are numerically coded as one, two and three. So one for China, two for the UK and three for Japan. You can see that in SPSS by switching back and forth here with the value labels icon. And so those numerical categories obviously are completely arbitrary. I could have chosen a completely different numerical code. I could have chosen one for the UK and two for Japan three for China, or I could have chosen 10,000 for China or whatever. And so those have no quantitative meaning. And therefore, I cannot simply use this country variable here as a predictor in a regression because it would suggest that being Japanese is something that is bigger than being from the UK or being from China, since Japan is arbitrarily coded here as three, whereas China is coded as one and the UK is coded as two. And that would make no sense because I could equally well code Japan as one and China as two and the UK as three, and that would be equally valid for a nominal variable. So therefore, we have to use dummy code variables to properly represent the information, the nominal information that is contained in this variable. We cannot simply use this country variable as a predictor in regression. That wouldn't make any sense. And we would get different results if we coded the categories differently, which again, that makes no sense. So therefore, we have to use dummy variables. And dummy variables are binary variables that have the values of zero or one. Here I created three dummy variables to show you the dummy variable trap later on. I created one for China, that's my dummy variable D1, where you can see all individuals who were from China were coded as one. And then this dummy variable has values of zero for all others. For those individuals from the UK, they get zero and the Japanese individuals also get zero on D1. Next is the dummy variable for the UK, which has values of zero unless somebody is from the UK, as you can see here. So same principle, ones for the category in question, zero for all other categories. And then third, I have a dummy variable for Japan, D3, where all individuals are coded as zero except Japanese individuals who are coded as one. And so those dummy variables re allow me to represent the information in my nominal variable in terms of binary codes, 0, 1. And then I can use those binary variables in a regression model as predictors. And that gets me around this problem of the arbitrary coding of the nominal category. So I can now use those dummy variables in a regression to look at whether 
membership or whether um, the nationality um, has or results in differences in optimism, whether there are any mean differences in optimism between those different countries, or I could say whether nationality can predict optimism. So let's do that and let's run a regression analysis with our dummy code variables using optimism as our dependent variable. So I'm going to go to analyze, regression, linear. I'm going to use a linear regression model here because my optimism dependent variable is a continuous variable. If you had a binary dependent variable or a nominal dependent variable with more than two categories, you would use logistic regression analysis. And in terms of the dummy variables, it would work in the same way. So let's do that. Let's put our optimism dependent variable in this uh, field here. And then I'm going to use all three dummy variables as independent variables for now to see what happens when we do that. So I'm going to put them here as predictor variables or independent variables. And then I'm going to click the OK button. And so now you can see that in the SPSS output file, if you look closely at the first table, and specifically the table node, you can see that table node B says tolerance equals zero limit reached. That should give you pause, right? Because normally you would not see or not expect to see such a message in a regression model. And it's potentially indicative of a problem. So what does this mean? Tolerance is a measure of collinearity, meaning how strongly your independent variables are correlated with one another. Or you could say it's a measure of redundancy or linear dependency of the independent variables. And so when you reach a tolerance value of zero, it means there must be at least one independent variable that is perfectly linearly dependent or perfectly linearly predictable by the other variables or some of the other variables in your set of independent variables. So this means one variable is completely redundant. And so that's what's indicated here by SPSS that when we include all three dummy variables for all three groups, we get a redundancy problem. One of those is not needed. Next is the model summary table with an R squared value that looks normal. So in this table, there's nothing that indicates a problem. The R squared value is quite high, indicating that there are strong mean differences in optimism between the three countries. We get an ANOVA table that also looks normal. You can see the P value for the F statistic here is pretty small. So this means there's a statistically significant R squared value here in this uh, analysis and there's no obvious problem with the ANOVA table. When we go to the coefficients table, there's also no obvious problem, but you can see that not all three dummy variables have been included as predictor variables here. You can see only the UK dummy variable and the Japan dummy variable have been included by SPSS. The China dummy variable got kicked out. And so that can be seen more directly from the last table where SPSS clearly states excluded variables, China. So the China dummy variable was removed by SPSS due to a tolerance statistic of zero. And again, a tolerance statistic of zero means that dummy code was perfectly linearly dependent on the other two. Now, in a way, SPSS resolved this problem for us. You can see that one dummy variable got automatically removed. So it got us out of the trap. The dummy variable trap is when you include as many dummy codes as you have groups. And that's not necessary and not good because it causes redundancy and collinearity problems in the regression model. Now, SPSS is a relatively smart program that then finds a solution for you and it kicks out one of the dummy code variables automatically. Other statistics programs may not do that. So maybe they're not as smart and they'll just give you an error message and say, I couldn't compute this regression model because there was a redundancy problem among your set of independent variables. You need to fix your regression model. But so SPSS already resolved this issue by kicking one of the dummy variables out. But before we talk about this in more detail, let's first of all 
understand really what happens here. So why is it again the case that one of the dummy codes is redundant and is this really the case? So in order to see this more clearly, we can actually check the linear dependency of the China dummy variable on the other two by going back to the regression option, linear, and then what we can do is we can remove the dependent variable optimism for now and instead we can put in our China dummy code variable as the dependent variable to see to which extent the China dummy variable can be linearly predicted from the other two. Remember the China dummy variable is the one that SPSS decided to remove from the model due to a tolerance value of zero or we could say due to perfect redundancy. So let's take a look at what happens when we predict this China dummy variable from the other two in a linear regression. And so then when we do that and we take a look at the model summary table, you can see that the R squared value for predicting the China dummy variable from the Japan and the UK dummy variable is 1.0. So there's perfect predictability or perfect linear dependence of that first dummy variable on the other two, meaning it didn't contain additional information that we needed or that would have been useful for us here. And that was the reason why SPSS kicked it out. Now, another way to see this that is less statistical is when we go back to our data set and we take a closer look at the coding, we can see that really all the necessary information is contained in the last two dummy codes here. So we don't need the China dummy variable because we have all the information about country differences represented in D2 and D3, the last two dummy variables. To see this, you can take a look here and you can see that those individuals from China are coded as 0, 0 on D2 and D3. So they have a pattern of 0, 0. The individuals from the UK have a pattern of 1, 0. And the individuals from Japan have a pattern of 0, 1. So there's three patterns, 0, 0 for China, 1, 0 for UK and 0, 1 for Japan. And that completely represents the three countries. We don't need another dummy variable to tell us, oh, this is China. No, we can see who is from China by looking at the pattern and filtering out those individuals who have a pattern of zero, zero across D2 and D3. And that's the information that we need. So really it is redundant to include all three. Now, does it matter which dummy variable you drop? Not statistically, you get the same R squared value and model fit, regardless of whether you drop the China dummy variable or one of the other two. However, for the interpretation of the regression coefficients, it can make a difference which one you drop because the one that you drop serves as the reference category. So let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. And so I'm gonna rerun the regression model with optimism as my dependent variable here. And I'm gonna remove the dummy variables for now. And so what I wanna do here now is I wanna use Japan as the reference category for reasons that I'll show you later. And I'm gonna use only D1 and D2 in my analysis. So I'm gonna use the dummy variable for China and the dummy variable for the UK. I'm gonna leave out the dummy variable for Japan in this case. So when I do that, we get the same R squared value as in the first analysis when SPSS helped us and removed the China dummy variable from the analysis. Remember the R squared was also 0.733 and the F statistic also hasn't changed. So it doesn't matter whether we remove the China dummy variable or um, one of the other ones from the analysis, we'll get the same model summary table, we'll get the same ANOVA table. However, we'll get a different coefficients table because the reference category is now different. Now, the reference category is not China, but it is Japan, which means that our constant or intercept of the, reg of the regression, so our B0 term or additive constant, gives us the mean in the reference group. So the mean optimism score in 
the Japanese group. And so that's two here. So Japanese had a pretty low optimism mean in my hypothetical example that I made up. And so the constant here gives us this um, optimism mean in group Japan. And now you can see why I picked Japan as the reference category because they had the lowest mean. And so then they serve as the reference group and China and the UK are compared against this reference group. The coefficient for China of seven gives us the mean difference in optimism between China and Japan. So in other words, the Chinese on average were more optimistic by seven points as compared to the Japanese group. And when we look at the t-statistic and the associated p-value, we can see that that was a significant mean difference of seven points. So in China, the mean optimism in this sample was nine, so two plus seven, and in Japan it was two. So the mean difference of seven here was statistically significant. And then we can also take a look at the same difference for the UK versus Japan. So the people from the UK on average had a higher optimism score higher by three points relative to Japanese people. So in the UK, the mean was two plus three equals five. So three points higher than in Japan. And that difference was not statistically significant. So there was not a statistically significant mean optimism difference between the UK and Japan, but there was a significant difference between China and Japan. This is what we can read from those coefficients here in the table. And that shows you that it does matter for the interpretation, which dummy variable you leave out, because that determines what you use as the reference category. And so one or a certain comparison may be more meaningful than another comparison. So for example, picking the group that is lowest as the reference or picking the group that is a control group or a placebo group or some kind of otherwise specific group can make more sense, even though it doesn't make any difference for the overall R squared or ANOVA table. It does make a difference for the coefficients and for the interpretation of the p-values of those coefficients. So in summary, the dummy variable trap occurs when you include as many dummy variables as you have groups in your regression analysis. That is too much. You don't have to include as many dummy variables as you have groups. Instead, include one dummy variable less than you have groups. So when you have three groups, you would only use two dummy variables. If you had five groups, you would only include four dummy variables and so on. Always one dummy variable less then you have groups and then you will be fine. I hope you found this video useful to learn more about the dummy variable trap and how this can be demonstrated in SPSS. If you did, please subscribe to this channel. Also, don't forget to check out the description for additional resources, including workshops that we offer through Quantfish. And I'll see you next time.